In the 1880 years, the world was carved into empires as European powers rushed to divide the African continent in what would be known as the Scramble for Africa. At the Berlin Conference of 1885, nations drew lines across maps with rulers, ignoring the landscapes, people, and ecosystems that lay beneath. Steamships and rifles opened the interior, and with them came deforestation, overhunting, and the systematic dismantling of ancient habitats. Across Africa, elephants were slaughtered for ivory, great mammals driven from their ranges, and fragile ecosystems fragmented by railroads and colonial extraction. Meanwhile, the second industrial revolution surged forward. Electricity lit streets in major cities, and in France, Etienne Jules Marais and Louis Le Prince laid the groundwork for motion pictures, images that would soon capture a changing world. In America, corporations grew vast, and urban sprawl pushed deeper into the wild, while in Australia and Asia, colonial industries scarred once thriving natural regions. Scientific curiosity expanded, but conservation remained absent, and countless species vanished unrecorded, too common to protect until they were gone. The wild was no longer seen as sacred or infinite, but as a resource to be catalogued, mined, or mounted. In this decade of mapped ambition, borders erased nature, and extinction followed silently behind progress. The Paris Caracodon is a species of good-eat fish once endemic to Coahuila, in Mexico. The specific name honors the American herpetologist and ichthyologist Samuel Garman. Its natural habitats were destroyed between 1900 and 1953, and no records have been made in the last century, it is considered extinct, although the validity of this taxon and where the actual type locality is are subject to some doubt. On the lush island of St. Lucia once lived the St. Lucia giant rice rat, a cat-sized rodent known for its delicate skull and webbed hind feet. With a coat of ochre brown and a pale belly, its long, sparsely haired tail added to its distinct appearance. This gentle creature thrived in quiet isolation until invasive threats arrived. The introduction of the small Indian mongoose in the late 19th century spelled its doom, wiping it out soon after its last sighting in 1881. A single preserved specimen in London's Natural History Museum is all that remains of St. Lucia's lost giant rat. The Jamaican wood rail was a reddish-brown, ground-dwelling bird once found throughout Jamaica's swamps, jungles and streambeds. Though it could fly, it preferred to run, a trait that proved fatal against invasive predators. Already vulnerable due to rats and cats, its fate was sealed with the arrival of the small Indian mongoose in 1872. By 1881, the last of these elusive birds had vanished from the island forever. Once roaming the vast grasslands of South Africa, the quagga was a striking creature, part zebra, part horse, with bold stripes on its head and neck that faded into a soft brown along its flanks. Its unique coat, a natural gradient of wild design, made it unmistakable among equids, though closely related to Birchall's zebra. Quaggas gathered in herds that moved like caravans across the arid Karoo, grazing beneath the wide skies and mingling with ostriches and white-tailed news. Adapted to the cooler southern climates, it had a thick winter coat, and mares were larger than stallions, likely an evolutionary edge in harsh seasons. Though little is known of its wild behavior, European observers noted its curious docility, a few were even trained to pull carriages in London. Indigenous San Rock art and colonial records speak of its abundance, yet its trusting nature made it an easy target for settlers. Hunted for meat and skins, and confined to a shrinking range, the quagga vanished silently, 
its last captive dying in Amsterdam in 1883, unrecognized as the final of its kind. By the time extinction was acknowledged, it was already too late. The quagga's story lingers through preserved hides, skeletons and one tragic photograph of a lone mare in a London zoo. As naturalist Henry Bryden lamented, that an animal so beautiful should have been allowed to be swept from the face of the earth, is surely a disgrace to our latter-day civilization. The Hawaiian rail was a small, flightless bird that once inhabited the shrublands and abandoned fields of Big Island's Puna district, often seeking refuge in rat burrows. Its elusive nature and subtle coloring made it difficult to detect, and few specimens now remain in museum collections. Though spared widespread hunting due to traditional kapu laws, it could not withstand the onslaught of introduced predators like rats and cats, which likely led to its quiet disappearance by the late 19th century. The last reliable sighting was in 1884, a soft final echo from Hawaii's lost undergrowth. Once echoing through the forests of Martinique, Martinique house wren, a shy island subspecies of the house wren, sang its final note sometime around 1886, vanishing with barely a trace. Little is known about the precise cause of its extinction, but its silence may have been sealed by habitat loss or the slow, unseen pressure of introduced predators. This small, brown songbird likely threaded its way through the island's tangled undergrowth, unseen but once unmistakable by voice. Bennett's seaweed was a delicate red algae once common in the waters around Sydney Harbour, its fine meshed blades thriving in clear, sunlit shallows. Endemic to just two known sites, it quietly vanished after urban expansion and pollution choked its fragile habitat with silt. Particularly vulnerable to such disturbance, the algae's intricate structure became its downfall, as sediment blocked the light it needed to survive. By the early 20th century, despite careful searches, it was gone, an extinction caused not by violence, but by the slow suffocation of its home. Once scurrying through the forest floor near Aula village in the Solomon Islands, the Guadalcanal rat is known only from a single specimen collected in the late 1880 years. With a distinctly narrow skull and worn molars, it bore similarities to its close relatives but stood out for its notably short tail, hinting at a life spent mostly on the ground. Since its collection, no trace has ever been found again, and local communities hold no memory of its existence. The emperor rat, larger and more robust than its cousin, once shared the same shadowy forests of the Solomon Islands. Unlike the elusive Guadalcanal rat, it was notable for its impressive size and powerful build, a true monarch among Pacific rodents. Collected during the same late 19th century expeditions, it too faded swiftly into obscurity, with no confirmed sighting since 1887. Together, these two vanished species mark the quiet unraveling of a unique island lineage, lost before it could ever be fully understood. The lesser Indian rhinoceros, also known as the hornless rhinoceros, once roamed the riverine forests of northeastern India, Bangladesh and Myanmar. Distinct for its elongated frame and slender limbs, it earned its subspecies name, Enormous, from the Latin for, unarmed, a reference to the hornless female that first defined the species. This solitary specimen, killed near the Ganges Delta in 1828, was collected by French explorers and eventually displayed in German and Bavarian museums. No males were ever documented, and little else was learned before the subspecies faded into obscurity. Despite sharing lineage with the Javan rhinoceros, its unique traits and limited record make it a mystery lost to time. Deforestation, poaching and human encroachment likely played roles in its quiet disappearance. By the end of the 19th century, sightings had ceased entirely, and it is now officially listed as extinct.
The Hokkaido wolf once roamed the snowy forests of northeastern Asia, more closely related to North American wolves than those of nearby mainland Asia. Revered as a sacred being by the Ainu people, it was both feared and respected, a ghostly presence that hunted deer in winter and left heavy tracks through deep snow. Its extinction was hastened during Japan's Meiji Restoration, when Western agricultural reforms brought poison and bounties to wipe out predators seen as threats to ranching. By the end of the 19th century, the howls of this formidable but elusive creature had vanished, leaving only memory and myth in its place. The Cuban macaw was a striking bird, adorned with a vivid red forehead that faded into warm oranges and yellows, complemented by bright white eye patches and blue-tipped tail feathers. About 50 centimeters long, it thrived in the open savanna and swampy forests of Cuba, feeding on hard palm seeds and fruits like those of the chinaberry tree. Once common near the Zapata swamp, its numbers dwindled due to habitat loss, hunting for food and the pet trade, and devastating hurricanes in the mid-19th century. Despite being described as slow and easy to catch, it was highly sought after by collectors, whose nest felling practices further reduced its population. By the late 1800 years, sightings had ceased, marking the quiet disappearance of this colorful emblem of Cuba's natural heritage. The Bonin-wood pigeon was a medium-sized bird endemic to Nakoto-jima and Chichi-jima in the Ogasawara Islands, measuring about 45 centimeters in length. Its plumage featured striking iridescent shades of green, violet and turquoise, with a distinctive blue iris and greenish-yellow bill. Known from only four specimens collected between 1827 and 1889, this species vanished by the late 19th century due to deforestation, hunting, and predation by introduced rats and cats. The white line top minnow was a type of killifish first identified in 1881. It was endemic to Big Spring, in Alabama, in the United States. This species was nearly identical to the barren's top minnow and grew to 8 centimeters long. It went extinct due to the rapid development of Big Spring leaving no habitat for it to thrive, and the last individuals were captured in 1889. The eastern hair wallaby was a small, slender macropod native to southeastern Australia, first described by John Gould in 1841. It measured about 50 centimeters in body length with a 30 centimeters tail, displaying fur colors ranging from black and brown to yellow, with a grayish-white belly. A nocturnal and solitary species, it rested quietly during the day and could leap impressively when startled. The last confirmed specimen was collected in 1889, and while its exact cause of extinction remains unclear, habitat changes and introduced predators likely contributed to its disappearance. The Bonin Nankin Night Heron, described in 1839, was a 60 cm bird with distinctive black crown plumes and cinnamon brown back, native only to the Bonin Islands. It inhabited beaches and marshes, feeding on insects, fish, and possibly small turtles. The species became extinct around 50 years after its description, with the last specimen collected in 1889. Predation by introduced rats and feral cats, along with hunting for its ornamental plumes, likely drove its extinction. Stadis pipistrelle is an extinct species of bat that was endemic to Japan. The last time this bat was seen was in 1889. However, the Stadis pipistrelle was declared extinct between 1996 and 2004. It was thought to have existed solely on Hahajima Island and the Bonin Islands where the only known specimen was discovered. More recent scholarship, though, places doubt on the single specimen's origin and taxonomy. The previous population of this animal is unknown because only one specimen has been preserved, which is currently housed in the Natural History Museum, in London.